Uh, just that. Um, you know, one of the things that we continue to be very proud of is uh, the type of people that we're producing. Uh, we can't take a whole lot of credit for Stefan uh, because he just transferred in as a, a fifth year uh, senior graduate student. But, uh, you know, guys like uh, Tim and uh, Jerry are guys that we love uh, putting out there in the community because they represent us so well um, by the type of student athletes they are. Um, and, and, you know, first and foremost, I think that's, that's one of the things when I first got here that Tom Jurich um, is all about is producing student athletes um, and um, ha how important it is for him to continue to provide the resources to, to give them the best opportunity to continue to grow and be successful. The second part of it is, is, is to, to be successful on the field. And that's something that we're driven to do each and every year. And last year was um, a, a year, to be honest with you, that um, we underachieved and yet um, we're very close. Um, in, in, the, in the scheme of it, RPI is a massive uh, dictating point of whether the season was successful or not. And our RPI at the end of the year was 25. And uh, to be regarded in the top 25 in the country is, is significant. Yet. Uh, Record-wise, we didn't put ourselves in a position to qualify. Had we won one of the games that we lost, we would have been in the NCAA tournament and maybe um, put ourselves in a good spot to make a run. Um, and that alone is a really good message for our guys in that um, there's a very fine line sometimes between being successful and not. And um, I think that allowed us to reflect on the season. Um, not only as a team, but as a coaching staff individually and, um, and uh, make a commitment to, to make sure that uh, this season was different. Tim, when you hear your captain say there was a commitment issue with the team last year and then he takes steps to correct it, what's your reaction to that? Was there any conversation between you and them in the offseason? To no, I, I, think, I think they were 100% right in that um, – uh, amongst uh, uh, not a, a large group, but just uh, enough of a group that was influential within the team, um, that there was a, a commitment, um, a full commitment. And, and here's the thing, if you're not 100% in, you're not in. And uh, we found, especially towards the end of the year, that there were um, individuals that um, had, a, had an influence within the team that were not and, and negatively affected us for sure. Well, just the the uh, the depth of it, you know, that every single game is a is a battle um, that you have to be prepared. And um, we saw that last year. There was such a fine line between actually getting results and not getting results, winning games and um, and tying games and losing games and tying games. And um, for us, we were close on so many different occasions, but um, not not good enough on those occasions to, to get us to a point where we could, you know, qualify for the NCAA tournament. Um, but that, that is it. With the, with the ACC, every game is a, is a battle, and every game is, is a game that you have to be prepared. And what about in goals that so important? Talk, talk about your situation in goal this, this year. And, and this, uh, well, we, you know, we were talking about it this morning, that bringing Stefan in um, has raised a level for everybody uh, all the goalkeepers, uh, his experience, uh, what he brings, his skill set, um, has, has created a competition in training that everybody has raised their level, even the new guys that are coming here. Um, and you could just see by him sitting here be, before you, he's a very mature kid, uh, very responsible, and uh, has been very successful. And all of that then brings a level of respect uh, on the field. And that maturity level and his skill level um, has just raised the lev level of uh, not only training for the whole, but for the keepers in particular. It's been awesome. What kind of impact does Jerry Ramirez bring to the game? It, it, you know, for Jerry, it has everything to do with his, um, his habits, uh, who he is as a person. Um, I, I, you know, I've been the first to say he's, he's not our most uh, gifted athlete. Um, he's not necessarily the, the best soccer player, but what he brings is a, um, a real commitment, determination, and grit every single day. You know, for a guy to go uh, four years and have a 4.0 GPA, 
Um, and it, there's a reason why he's one of our leaders. He's, he's a great example for all the guys, not only of, of um, how to be a good soccer player, but a student athlete in person as well. Um, and we, we so much needed that last year, and um, we missed him last year because of that. You, do have, you, you had some weird weather the first, in both exhibitions, but at this point, is the rotation pretty much set? How much competition going? Yeah, it's, going? Not, it's not near set. Um, you know, we, we, wish, we wish going into Butler that we were a, a little bit more set in the lineup. Um, but the reality is, is that we, um, you know, with the newcomers, we have a mix. We have a number of young guys that I think will be the future of our program. Um, but we have some guys that uh, will have an immediate impact. Um, we, we're still waiting on uh, the NCAA clearance of uh, Mo Chow, who um, is a junior college transfer. Uh, he's going to be a forward for us. He has a ton of potential, was a two-time All-American in junior college. And he's just going to be a handful, you know, for defenders. Um, so we haven't been able to use him in either one of the exhibitions. Um, we then incorporate uh, Adrian, uh, who is also an international transfer and um, will bring some experience to us, but uh, he has yet to play in, a, in an exhibition as well. Um, so we have some guys that we're still trying to incorporate. Tate um, played very few minutes in the last one, just coming back from an injury, he's healthy now. But, you know, those, those type of things, we're still integrating guys into the group. Um, we're very far from having a set uh, group. Um, but one thing I, I do believe, and I know now, is we'll be more, um, uh, much more uh, talented and deeper than we were last year. Did you pull anything from Copa America or the European Championships this summer watching them? Um, you know, what I, what I took from it, and um, w one of the things that we continue to tell our, our guys is the importance of um, just putting your best effort out there every single day. And you w look at teams like Chile play in Copa America, and um, clearly, you know, they had a, a good group, but not necessarily the most talented group. Um, and their, their ability to um, grind things out and just work together as a team are <coughs> impressive. And, and some of the things that we show our guys uh, on a regular basis, if there's one thing, that was it, the importance of being a good unit and uh, just relentless effort. Yeah. Talk about the scouting report for Butler coming up. You know, we don't know a whole lot about them. Uh, unfortunately, in some of the preseason games, there um, are agreements where uh, teams uh, agree not to share information and it's uh, sometimes tough to get video um, so we don't know a whole lot the results um, they they won I think two zero and one and three lost three two and another um, and so it appears that they're scoring goals um, and, you know and I think knowing their coach Paul Snape they're going to be um, attack minded they they want to have the ball um, they'll be organized and uh, they'll be a good team they've they've done pretty well in the Big East in the past um, so I would expect them to be a, a good opponent, you know, and, and, and in regards to whether it's Butler or anybody else in our schedule, I, I still very much believe that um, our expectations every single year should be to compete for a national championship. And you, you look back at last year's schedule and a lot of people said, well, if you had thrown a softer game in here or there, you might have been above 500. Um, but the reality is, is that if, if we're not um, in a position at the end of the year um, to win a national championship, then we don't deserve to be playing in it. And I, I still believe that, that our, our schedule is going to need to be tough to prepare us to, at the end of the year to have a realistic chance to, to get to the promised land. Um, and if we're not prepared to do that, then we, we don't deserve to be in it. Um, so we're, you know, when you look at our schedule, it's, it, maybe uh, the toughest schedule in the country. Um, but I also believe that getting through a schedule like that at the end of the year will prepare us best. Don't you feel like it's even tougher than it was last year? It, it could be. It, it could be. It could be, yeah. I, I, I do think we have a better team and more prepared this year to deal with it, but it could be. But, but again, it's, you know, it's not something we're, you know, we're not here to pad the, 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 you know, the record. 
Um, and again, our, our goal is to help prepare these guys to win a national championship and be in the postseason at the end of the year to do, you know, do some damage. And um, if we skip through it with a bunch of soft games, we're not going to be fully prepared. Talk about you have the stadium now uh, after a couple of years. Can you talk about the, the effects it's had on recruiting in your program? And now that you add the academic center, kind of the combination of both. It's tremendous. You know, the, whenever we get somebody on campus, whether it's our facilities or other sports facilities or the academic center, uh, they're massive in wooing kids and, and having an interest in what we're doing for sure. Um, you know, I, I, I've, always, I've always said that um, it, it isn't the buildings um, that decide who they become, it's the people. Um, and I think, one, we have the best people associated with an athletic department to help these, these guys and the student athletes become everything they can become. But the reality is this, is when you get kids on campus, the bells and whistles matter. They matter. So when you have nice buildings and nice facilities, um, it matters in the decision-making process. Um, so getting them here and having them make that decision, um, having facilities like this are, are awesome. I, I will say this, and I'm glad that, that Tim brought it up, is that um, I, I do think prior to this, this season, um, we didn't do enough for our players to understand um, what this building means to the Lens. And having Dr. Erlin and, and Cindy come in and spend some time with our players, I think, was massively important for them to appreciate uh, what it took in Dr. Lynn's life and, and the family's life to get to a point where they could um, hand over $5 million to have a, a stadium built. Because there were a lot of sacrifices that had to be made in their lives to get to the point where they could do that. And as I said to the players, they could have given it to their family. They could have given it to a lot of other constituents. They could have spent it on themselves. Instead, what they did, they decided to give the five million on behalf of student athletes, in particular, our program and the women's program here at the University of Louisville. And for that, not only do we have to be grateful, but with that is a lot of responsibility. Any more questions for Coach? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate it.